Quarter wave plates, when they act upon linear states, in general generate an elliptical state. And it's important to understand how the elliptical state relates to the input. Here's our horizontal and vertical axes that we've got here. And we're going to look at a general state that makes some angle with the horizontal axis. And we'll call that angle alpha. And the other thing that if, in any generic problem is that we're going to have the wave plate placed at some angle of its fast axis to the horizontal axis. So I will draw that in green. So here this dashed line represents the fast axis and this dashed line represents the slow axis of the wave plate, the quarter wave plate. So I'll write F for the fast axis and slow for the slow axis. And that wave plate makes an angle with the horizontal axis also and I will label that angle here, and I will call that angle theta. So here's, a, here's our generic problem. What output state is going to be generated for this red state when it passes through a quarter wave plate with the fast and slow axes oriented as they are here? The first thing that you do to set up this problem once you've drawn the wave plate axes is to surround this red linear state with a box, a box whose vertical and horizontal are aligned with the fast and slow axes. And this is exactly what I mean. You take the corners of the arrow here, you draw two other corners symmetric with the axes of the wave plate, and then you connect them. So here's a somewhat decently drawn box. So it isn't drawn as well as it could be, but I've drawn this rectangle here around this linear state because it's going to be the bounding box for the output elliptical state. The next thing that I do is I identify a location. I'm going to choose this upper corner over here where I can say that this fast component and this slow component are maximizing at the same time. I'm going to put a little hat over these two vectors and I'm going to say that your instruction is to choose choose an F hat and an S hat that maximize EF and ES at the same time. Right, so this red arrow, when, it, when this linear state has reached this upper corner of its oscillation, that's when EF and ES are both maximally positive if we were to choose our F hat and S hat vectors this way, which we're free to do. So now we can say that after the state passes through the wave plate, so after, so the output state, the output state by definition of a quarter wave plate, we're now instead of EF and ES maximizing at the same time, we're going to have EF leads ES by a quarter cycle, by pi over 2. So that means I can draw a dot here where EF maximizes, a dot here where ES maximizes, and I know that the path of the ellipse that's going to be the state goes like this. At some point is going to be pointing up to the top box here where the F is, later it's going to be pointing here, and this is the path. I can now finish drawing this path. Again, a pardon for my not-so-great artistic skills, but we now have an output state that's an ellipse that's bounded by this box, and we have all the information then that we need. If we were to write down now the properties of the output state, we would say, first of all, that there's a handedness. In other words, is it clockwise or cl counterclockwise? And because we analyzed, because we chose our analysis points that were initially in phase and then realized that the F component will lead the S component, we know that this particular one is going to be clockwise, CW. 
we can also look at this diagram and we can figure out where the major axis is of this ellipse. In this case, the way I've drawn it, this is the major axis along the F axis of the wave plate, and the minor axis is along the S axis of the wave plate. It doesn't have to be that way, but the way I've drawn this diagram, the major axis lines up, in this case, with theta. And I'll make a note for you that sometimes it's perpendicular to that. That's just saying it could, the major and minor axes line up with the axes of the wave plate. That's always the case. Sometimes it li the major axis is F, sometimes the major axis, the larger projection electric field is on S. The last thing is what's the ratio of the major to minor axes? So if I do the major to minor ratio, that is given by a third angle in this problem. The, the major to minor axis ratio is this length where the cursor is moving here to this length over here. In other words, the height of the box versus the width of the box. And I can label that angle that's going to give me that information here. I'll put a triple mark on it. And I'm going to call that angle gamma. So that angle, that angle gamma, the tangent of that angle, the opposite over the adjacent, is going to give me exactly this height of the box compared to the width of the box. So I take the tangent of angle gamma to get the ratio of the major to minor axes. In other words, how, what is the ellipticity of this state? And in order to figure out the angle gamma, it's the complement of this little angle that I've marked here. So it's going to be the complement of that, pi over two minus that angle. And that little angle that I marked there is theta minus alpha. So it's not that difficult to figure out what the angle gamma is. And these three properties tell us everything we want to know about how this wave plate has converted a linear state into an elliptical state at, with some handedness, some orientation of its major axis, and some degree of ellipticity.